Farage is back in the news, which shouldn't come as any great surprise, and I'm sure he's delighted to find himself at the centre of a storm about his earnings from GB News. Well, I've got, I deserve it. Uh, but VAT and allegations of financial impropriety, this is a controversy that has gained traction after Carol Vorderman, that doyen of LBC, a prominent figure known for her sharpness with numbers and countdown, publicly questioned Farage's financial disclosure, suggesting that he may not have paid sufficient VAT on his substantial earnings on his large packet. So, uh, Farage has today denied these claims in a tweet, uh, saying, sorry, sorry to disappoint you. Um, and um, uh, he's also put out a tweet of himself standing in front of the Clacton Fairground to prove that he's actually been there occasionally. And he's, sort of, he, he's, he's framed by the Ferris wheel, which, 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 which looks faintly like some sort of uh, nimbus or halo. So I suppose he's aspiring to some sort of sanctity. Um, so so his, his posts on Twitter have become hagiographic. Uh, so in denying these claims, he is, he is making a stab for canonization, uh, stating that the amount paid to him by GB News includes VAT and was for, and was for several months of work. But his defence, that defence, raises several questions and opens the door to further scrutiny. Uh, because Farage's earnings from GB News, reportedly around £98,000 a month, have put him under the spotlight as potentially the highest paid MP. But the issue Vorderman raises pertains to the nature of VAT in these earnings. VAT is a tax collected by businesses on behalf of the government is not supposed to be included as part of an individual's earnings and the guidance for MPs on disclosure of their finances is clear. Earnings should be declared before the addition of VAT or the subtraction of VAT. And Vorderman point out that if Farage included VAT in his earnings declaration, he either misreported his earnings, um, which would be a matter of st stupidity, uh, breaching the parliamentary code for conduct, or he lied in his public defence, which would be a matter of duplicity. Farage's tweet implies that the sum declared to Parliament was inclusive of VAT, which directly contradicts the guidance and suggests either an error, stupidity, or an intentional misrepresentation, duplicity. This discrepancy warrants further investigation, as it could imply that Farage either doesn't understand the VAT system, which would be a surprising possibility given his lengthy career in public life and given his background in finance, though I understand from people who worked with him as a stockbroker that he was a pretty useless stockbroker. And uh, so either it is surprising that he is so stupid or it's about being deliberately misleading. One or the other, it can't be both. Now, I think, personally, uh, stupidity is likely to be the answer because it's very difficult dealing with new bureaucracy, no matter how experienced you may be, and this is new bureaucracy for Farage. Now, you can't imagine, I can't imagine why I'm coming to Farage's defence except for the fact that I've been trying to deal with um, the bureaucracy of YouTube and uh, putting out merchandise and stuff, and I find it simply incomprehensible. And uh, it's like banging your head against a sharpened nail. Uh, and and it is, it is mind-numbing because there is no support. Uh, and, and you wait for a review and you don't even know if you've su submitted all the correct material because all the documentation is labelled not, not in any... Not in any comprehensible way is labelled with numbers, uh, and you have to have a complete list of these numbers to hand to be able to understand what documents you're talking about. I don't have that list, um, partly because I've been managed by various people every so often, uh, and um, I, I, it's been a very bumpy ride, a very very bumpy ride, and. Um, it's not this dealing with bureaucracy is not at the 
is not at the front of my brain, frankly. Uh, dealing with somebody else's bureaucracy, actually, I'm very good at that. Dealing with my bureaucracy, uh, particularly when it's something that I'm not expecting. And this is something that Farage wasn't expecting, I think. And uh, it, it must have come as a bit, of, a bit of a surprise, and therefore I am sympathetic. And I know you think, oh, oh my goodness, surely he hates Farage, surely he shouldn't be sympathetic. Well, I am sympathetic, and I don't hate Farage. I just think he's a silly boy. And, um, you know, the point is that for Farage, um, holding his hands up and saying, I've been a silly boy, is not something that he's used to doing. That goes against his uh, perception of masculinity. In my case, I, I spend my life pointing out that I'm a silly boy. And, uh, and that is part of my identity, I believe. Um, and... Uh, along with uh, along with a complete conviction that I may I, I, I may believe something today and tomorrow I may find different evidence and therefore believe completely the opposite that that I think is my right and in that I followed I, I follow John Maynard Keynes when the facts change I change my belief uh, MPs are required to declare their financial interests to ensure transparency and accountability, and these declarations allow the public to scrutinise whether MPs have conflicts of interest or are receiving income from sources that might influence their duties. And Farage's declaration, if indeed erroneous, should be corrected promptly. While it's possible that this was an innocent mistake, MPs are certainly not immune to challenges of paperwork, it's essential for Farage to clarify the issue and, if necessary, amend his declaration. But it is extraordinary that in one month Farage earns more on GB News than he earns in an entire year as an elected MP. And if Farage doesn't correct his submission in the coming weeks, it would suggest that his original statement was not just a mistake, but a deliberate attempt to mislead. And that potential scenario raises... Further questions, why would Farage feel the need to downplay his earnings? Hmm? Well, one possible reason is public perception, because Farage has long styled himself as a, as a man of the people, well, a man of the people, and an admission of earning nearly £100,000 a month from media work might undermine this image, especially when juxtaposed um, against, his financial, uh, against the financial struggles of many of his constituents. Now, here we get Richard Tice, his other millionaire, a close friend of Farage, wades into the controversy defending his friend's high earnings by framing them as a result of hard work, uh, a notion um, that, 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 that he, uh, he, he and Farage both like to promote the idea of being aspirational. Nothing wrong with being aspirational. Yet in the same breath, Tice criticises wage increases for ordinary workers, revealing a stark disconnect between his support for wealthy friends and his apparent disdain for working-class aspirations. And this contradiction exposes the hypocrisy at the heart of the argument. Tyson Farage, who both enjoy luxurious lifestyles, seem to suggest that substantial earnings are justifiable only for a select few, while ordinary workers should accept their lot without complaint. Tyson's comments underscore a broader issue within certain political circles, the defence of wealth and privilege, even at the expense of public trust. By defending Farage's earnings while simul simultaneously decrying pay increases for others, for real workers, Tice inadvertently highlights a growing disconnect between politicians and the electorate that they claim to represent. This party of the people narrative that e Reform UK puts out increasingly rings hollow when juxtaposed with the lavish lifestyle of its leaders. Farage's situation, coupled with Tice's really rather useless defence, is emblematic, therefore, of a larger issue in British politics, the need for greater accountability and transparency in MPs, particularly those who present themselves as champions of the common person, must ensure that their financial dealings are beyond reproach. And the controversy surrounding Farage's earnings is not just about VAT, it's about trust. And if politicians like Farage and Tice are seen to be manipulating public 
um, pu pu public disclosure, financial disclosures, um, or defending the indefensible. It risks eroding uh, public confidence in the political system. And this controversy should prompt a broader discussion about the transparency of MPs, financial interests, and uh, and the influence that they've got, or the influence which is upon them. The current system, while it appears robust, leaves room for ambiguities and loopholes because it's a bureaucratic system. And those people who understand that bureaucracy can get round it, and those people who don't understand that bureaucracy fall foul of it because it's about providing information to a series of questions which are designed to expose the loopholes. It's about getting through a game. If you don't know the game, you can't play it. And ensuring MPs cannot hide significant income streams or misrepresent their earnings is essential for maintaining the integrity of the parliamentary system. And maybe... Maybe more guidance needs to be had and more straightforward conversations need to be had rather than playing the stupid game. Stupid games don't work. You, you, you play these stupid games with um, the, the bank as well. It, it, it's just nonsensical. Um, the, 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 this controversy surrounding Farage's earnings from GB News, his subsequent defence uh, highlights the importance of transparency and accountability in politics. And if somebody can be expected to stand up and, um, and, 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 and make a statement about his constituents, can be trusted to do that, he should be able to stand up and make a statement about his personal wealth and his business interests. And while Farage may attempt to downplay the significance of his earnings, the questions raised by Carol Vordman are perfectly valid and they deserve answers. The public has a right to know whether their representatives are being truthful about their own finances. And if Farage's declaration remains unchanged, it could indicate a deeper issue of dishonesty and one that merits closer scrutiny in the weeks to come. Uh, in addition, the hypocrisy of Richard Tice's defence complicates rather than clarifies the narrative and it reveals a troubling disconnect between political rhetoric and reality. So we come back to the big issue. Is Farage a fool or is, or is he a liar? One or the other.